It's the second season of the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. Jen and Angela are two moms raised on Disney magic, figuring out parenthood one day, one milestone, and sometimes one meltdown at a time. Thanks for listening and enjoy this week's new episode. Happy Pride Month, everyone. Welcome to the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. I'm Angela Dahlgren here with my co-host, Jen Snyder. Hello. Sorry for the little hiatus. That was mostly my fault, but we are back. It was just a really busy May. Okay. Yeah. It It happens. Like CDC changed some rules. We don't have to wear a mask. We're vaccinated. I went on vacation. There's just like a lot to think about. There's a lot going on. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. I started jujitsu again. Yeah. Kicking butt, taking names. Exactly. Lots Mm -hmm. of names. Actually, everyone's just kicking my butt because I haven't (laughs) been in 14 months. Whatever. You'll be back in it in no time. I feel like I should give you an update to the Stitch Fix saga. Yes, just because I talked about it on the last episode, which was a million mm-hmm. years ago. Um, I did not do well with any of the items, not because I didn't enjoy them. I actually really like two cardigans that they sent me, but it's like, what am I going to do with two cardigans during yeah. the summer when it's like right. 90? So I ended up returning everything. They did offer to send me another stitch to replace it but at that mm-hmm. point it really was a it's not you it's me thing right mm-hmm. so I'm just I'm giving it a break for a little bit yes I'm out 20 bucks but I did get two stitches out of it so I figure it was like 10 bucks a stitch so I'm on pause yeah. right now we'll try again at some point I'm just not I'm not ready are there similar companies as well I'm sure Maybe there go are down that path and try them out I'm sure there are I just yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just, plus my house is getting to that way too cluttered point again, mm-hmm. where I'm getting mm-hmm. overwhelmed. I actually went through my clothes the day I got home from Florida, which is what mm-hmm. we're talking about today. We're talking about my trip to Walt Disney world. Oh my gosh. Hazel, you went to Florida again. Yes, I did. So, <laughs> so great for you and your life. Great. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Do you even like do anything else besides go to Florida? Not really. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, I mean, like decluttering spring cleaning phase, you can totally tell that me talking is just like, Hey, we haven't podcasted in a while. So I'm just <laughs> rambling. This is total stream of conscious and like B I'm really excited to see you. So I just want to fill you in on everything that I haven't talked to you about in weeks. Hard hands, hard hands back. Um, I understand that though, because we have been doing something similar where I'm literally like finding clothes under the bed, buried in the closets, whatever. And I'm washing everything and then going, okay, let's go through the kids' clothes. What needs to be retired? Let's go through our clothes. Let's throw these out because they're gross. And like, these shouldn't even be donated. Then these should be donated, the, you know, mm-hmm, and trying mm-hmm. to organize everything. So I have also been, it's, it must be the weather, not this weekend's weather here in the Northeast of 40 degrees and raining, but the normal spring weather, I think maybe mm-hmm. that's what's doing it for us. You just want to like clean out all the winter dust and cobwebs and get everything back to neutral. I will say during quarantine, I followed the Marie Kondo method. And Mm -hmm. so I don't have a ton to declutter because I already did the big push last year. Yeah. So, you know, I'm getting rid of a lot less. Uh, Yeah. But still, it's it's way more than it should be after Marie Kondoing my entire house. It's a little ridiculous. That's how it goes, though. I buy nonsense. I what can I say? I and then I just think like, if we ever moved one day, like, oh my God, what am I doing? There's still so much. I feel like, wow, look at all the stuff I'm just getting rid of. Oh my God. There's still so much more in this house. Our neighbors are moving to Texas, to mm-hmm. Texas. They're not even moving like within the state or within the town. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how you pick up your whole house life yeah. and just move to a different state. That sounds so stressful. I will never do it just because of that anticipatory anxiety factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless it's like Disney, like next to Disney. I mean, yeah, because the end result is totally worth it. Speaking of, (sighs) you just got back from Disney. Segway. Uh, Yes. Uh, I feel like I should mention that if you didn't listen to our last episode where we talked about Stitch Fix and then some Mm -hmm. Disney news and tips, please do that after this one. It was yes. pretty good. It was just Jen and I, just like today is. Also, Sometimes we like to chat it up. We do. And, and we have a lot of catching up to do. Apple Watch. Shh. Don't be quiet. 
Frankie also got back from Disney and you did yes. quite a few episodes about it. Yes, we did uh, four to be exact. Yeah. Four of five episodes we technically recorded last week because we were ahead of the game for this week too. So yeah. Okay. So you got to listen to Frankie's <laughs> episodes because, yeah. oh, and he took the most beautiful picture I've ever seen someone take. I think it's mm-hmm. Liberty Square or something. Yeah. It was yep. gorgeous. It's on his Facebook. Gorgeous. Too. Did he post that to Instagram too? I think that's on the Dillow's Diz Instagram as well. But yeah, we did four days for each, one day for each park, his little trip report per park. So yeah, you can check that out on the theme park. There's a podcast. Also, plug. Uh, Dillow's Resort, don't, if you subscribe to the Dillow's Resort Patreon, don't they get little bonuses and little bonus they episodes, might. a newsletter? They might get some exclusive content from the Dillow's, you know, there's a little bit here and there. Whatever. Might as well check that out if you're already on their yeah. little Spotify, <laughs> iTunes, wherever you listen to your pads. Okay, so we can... Mm-hmm. We'll just move into our episode now. I just had to put that in there <laughs> before you got too uncomfortable and delicate. <laughs> so true. Which, by the way, let me just side note the whole dillowing it, um, which I should probably also, maybe I'll tell this story again and uh, cross over the story to maybe Theme Park Thursday Live or something. But I mean, we are fully aware of where we get our dillowing and it's absolutely from our parents. But mom and Papa Dillo are redoing their kitchen. And Mama Dillo had a sample of her black backsplash countertop cabinets today, like just sitting in the kitchen. And she was like, what do you think? And I was like, oh, I like it. Do you not like it? She's like, no, I do. It goes. I'm like, okay, but like, do you like it? Like She's it. like, no, I do. And I'm like, okay. And then are like, what are the cabinets? And then she brought up, up the cabinet. I was like, oh, yeah. So that'll look nice. She's like, yeah. No, I do. I'm like, okay, but is it bringing you joy? And she's like, yes. No, it is. It is. I was like, okay, well, you seem very excited about it. She's like, I'm just, I'm just like tired of like looking through them all and they all start to look the same. And, but she's dillowing the whole thing. She's about to like have this brand new kitchen. She's dillowing it. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, there it is. That's okay. Where we get it. This. I totally know you better now after this conversation. <laughs> so yeah. many, so many days. I'm like, but is she okay with this decision? Is yeah. she mad? Is she okay? Yeah. Is she having it's a good time? <laughs> so yeah. I totally get this better now. And yeah. getting a new kitchen is a huge deal because that's where, honestly, let's face it, it's where we spend a lot of our time. Mm-hmm. And picking things out is a pain, but once you make the decision, you usually love what you've decided and gone with. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think she would probably prefer to like have the property brothers come in and just all do it for her and like make the decisions and just be like, I trust you, go for it. And well, do that so she didn't have to. I have not heard good things about the property brothers. I hear that they oh, kind yeah. of cut corners oh, and don't yeah. put quality work into their work but I also heard that about like trading spaces and stuff too and extreme home makeover so I'm just my childhood is a little damn so you just got back from Disney I did yeah how was it did you and this is like you're so although you have been to Florida twice before in recent Mm -hmm. months this was the first family trip Yes. So March was not expected. That was Michael being like, you're burnt out. Go. Yeah. Uh, April was planned. That was with my cousin and his wife and Michael. And mm-hmm. then this one was another planned one. It was just like, my husband has to book his vacation over a year in advance because yeah. of his job. So mm-hmm. we kind of have to go on vacation whenever he has time off and it's yeah. never during the traditional time off. It's always super random. So it just kind of worked out this way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we just had Tuesday to Saturday and we stayed at old key West, which is his favorite. I, he doesn't like the theme parks. He likes it more since we had kids, but I kind of have to do these like little tricks to get him to enjoy it more. I have to entice him in mm-hmm. little ways, whether that's fitting in an all pool day or an all beach day in between the theme parks 
or booking at his favorite resort. And that's mm-hmm. the little, as well as the little Easter eggs I placed to get him to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. That yeah. sounds good. <laughs> this is feeling like a vacation now. Yeah. Okay, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I have to do. Or I can't make yeah. the flight too early or mm-hmm. else I know he'll be crabby all day. <laughs> it kind of makes him sound like a jerk. He's not. He just happens to be a Disney curmudgeon and that's yeah. okay because mm-hmm. he's still fine with me going to Disney. He still yeah. goes with me to the theme parks. He's incredibly supportive over what I do and any job I want to pursue within the industry, mm-hmm. but he's just a Disney curmudgeon, whatever. Yeah. So we went Tuesday to Saturday and um, where do I start? What do I start with? Okay. So, you know, let's go day by day. Okay. So Tuesday you flew in, in the morning. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay. So the way I planned this out, I was kind of, I tried to be strategic about it. Maybe mm-hmm. it's like, wow, she's like going way too into this, but I, pl- I tried to plan it so that we would get in and have a free day. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday, um, we would just start late mm-hmm. just because, so we'd start at Epcot and Makes Epcot sense. opens at 11. Mm -hmm. So we'd kind of have an easier day there only to start at magic kingdom the day after where we would go at rope drop, which would be like eight or nine. Right. Okay. Followed by Hollywood studios, which would be a a 9am opening. So I was very strategic in the park days and the park open and closes because I wanted to kind of pace us as much as we could, because it was going to be like 96 the entire time we were there. Crazy. And Mm -hmm. we have a five and a seven-year-old. Yeah. Um, the past two trips, I've either gone alone or I've gone with adults. Mm-hmm. I haven't been with my kids since January, 2020. So I forgot what it's like to go with kids. Mm-hmm. And I had to very rapidly adjust my expectations, which was fine, but it was like, oh, we're going to have to go a lot slower than I'm used to. Okay. Just mm-hmm. gotta adjust that in my brain quick. And I just had forgotten how much slower kids are when yeah. you're when you're doing Disney with them. I'm like, oh my gosh, it takes them like five minutes to put their shoes on. Like mm-hmm. this is taking forever. Okay, well, I'm just not. Guess we're gonna adjust that touring plan a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so we got in, got to our room, and um, we went to Disney Springs, and like no one wanted to go shopping. And uh-huh. I did not understand. No one <laughs> wanted to go to Gideon's. I got us in the virtual line. Mm-hmm. No one wanted to go. No one wanted to go to the, you know, the wonderful world of Disney store. No one wanted to go to the Star Wars store that they had or Amaretts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it was because it was so hot or what have you, but um, we had a reservation at Wine Bar George. So uh, we went there and I had my little Froscato, which was stronger than the first time I had it to the point where I wondered if they gave me a virgin one last time. Oh, wow. Yeah. It kind of made me wonder. So, oh, she has her kids with her this time. This maybe might be helpful. Or maybe yeah. they like didn't add the vodka or something because it was way right. stronger than last time. Um, <sighs> and then the kids went swimming afterwards at Old Key West. And then, oh, Okay. So about 2 AM, my daughter's like, Oh, my tummy hurts. And she like goes to the bathroom thinks she's going to puke and that whole thing. And she's kind of warm, but we're not really Mm -hmm. sure. It's like the thing where her forehead itself is not warm, but like her head is. And it's like, Mm -hmm. you just got to double check with a thermometer. And of course we are the farthest distance from the lobby. (laughs) Yeah. So my husband uh-huh. at two 30 in the morning walks all the way to the lobby and gets a thermometer and gets some Tylenol because we also didn't bring that. I don't know. I forgot so many things on this trip and he comes back and, um, of course she doesn't have a fever, but it was nice to have anyway. Yeah. And after that whole event, like neither him or I is we're tired. So we just kind of like stay mm-hmm. awake looking at our phones for the next two hours and we're up till like yeah. four. Um, but because it was our Epcot day, we didn't have to be there till 11. So that was like, yes, big that was savior. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what I figured was wrong with her is I think she was just dehydrated. You know, they say that swimming mm-hmm. can dehydrate you more than other things. And I think that between Disney Springs with it being so hot and then swimming, that's what it was. Um, yeah. Do we have any questions thus far? Sense. It's not no, very I think your first day, so 
No, it's it's very exciting. It's Disney. Hello. I think the first day was really good. It was like a good ease into the trip, which okay. makes sense. And I think, you know, it was good that you had Epcot the next day and you weren't trying for like rise of the resistance in the morning as poor Annie wasn't feeling well. So that's also helpful. So um, so far I'm loving it. So you go to Epcot. Did we have any reservations <clears throat> at Epcot? Okay. So on my bucket list, I've always wanted to eat inside the Mexico pavilion at San Mm -hmm. Angel Inn because I've Mm -hmm. always, I just like, I, I just think the whole, like watching the boats go by or even at garden grill, like Mm -hmm. watching any part of a ride while you're eating, Mm -hmm. it just like kind of gets to me, even at when, when you're at Pinocchio house and you see it's a small world that just looks so charming to me. And so uh, we had those reservations at noon. And, uh, I figured, well, that's perfect with how hot it's going to be. That'll kind of break up the day and we can get in blah, blah, blah. Um, but Annie and Michael and I had kind of been up a lot of the night. Mm -hmm. Now me, it doesn't really matter how much sleep I get at Disney. I Mm -hmm. get up super early because I just want to go to the parks and Jay had gotten up early as well. So I thought, well, okay, him and I can just go and Mm -hmm. Annie and Michael can sleep do whatever. If they don't come to lunch, that's fine. Um, because the resorts don't penalize you and the restaurants don't penalize you. Um, if you have less people, right. That, that when you, they just need you to show up yeah, you know, or else it's like a $20 per person charge if you don't show up or whatever. Right. So Jay and I went for rope drop. And at that point they hadn't opened the park yet. And this is the only time that I had Jay put on a mask when we were outside Mm -hmm. Um, with the new protocols. If you're unfamiliar, you don't have to wear a mask outside, but you do have to wear them in inside any Mm -hmm. shop or restaurant and then in the ride queues. But we were in a line for rope drop. There was a ton of people around. My kid's not vaccinated. So I just had him put it on for that part. Um, But that was really the only time that I felt uncomfortable as a parent Mm -hmm. or as someone being with someone who was unvaccinated. Yeah. Unvaccinated. So it wasn't really a big deal. Um, but we only waited in line for a couple minutes and then they opened the park and last time Jay went on soar and he cried throughout the whole thing because the Mm -hmm. whole like will jumping in, splashing the kite going over your face, that all scares the crap out of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) But I said, okay, do you want to go on frozen or do you want to go on Soren? And he said, Soren. So we did that first. Mm -hmm. And what I do love about going with kids is that they force you to slow down. Mm -hmm. What I don't like about going with kids is that they force you to slow down. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, we went on Soren, which was great. Basically walked on the ride. And then we went to the World Showcase because I knew that he'd love seeing the trains in Germany. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing that I really spend a lot of time in, but we probably spent 10 minutes just watching the trains. I didn't even know there were three of them. Um, And we just watched them. I brought him to Italy. There was no one in Italy. So we got to walk around there. And that was really nice. Just enjoying those little things. He wanted to look at the moss in the water. Mm-hmm. So we did that. And that's, that's just the kind of fun things that I enjoy with kids is they find joy out of really weird things like moss yeah. in the lake, you know, yeah. or the little mm-hmm. trains. And that was just so cute. Um, I will say as far as the trip, something that I had, that we had to be very mindful of was how hot it was. Mm-hmm. It was at least 96 the entire time My and it didn't rain the whole time. Mm-hmm. So we were giving them sips of water every five minutes. I, I did, I did a course on child dehydration. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, this is true for adults too, but like the best way to hydrate a child or adult is to take sips every mm-hmm. like five to 15 minutes. Yeah. And that's better than having them just drink a whole bottle of water at once. So we were having them take sips every five minutes and we had to apply sunscreen every hour. It was just, it was brutal. The sun was brutal, but because Disney has a ton of indoor attractions, Mm -hmm. it broke up time in the heat super well. So we never got too hot. And if we did, we just got some ice cream. So it was great. Um, But yeah, so it was noon and um, by then Annie and Michael were feeling a little better. So they met us at San Angel Inn and because the restaurant opens at noon, 
I got there beforehand and I requested a table right by where the boats are. So we got a table there and that's maybe a little trick is if you get that noon reservation, you're the first people there. So you can request that view. And it was great. Like I definitely recommend eating there. The food was good. I love the views. Um, the staff is excellent Mm -hmm. and it was, it was so great. Oh, and the chips and salsa are amazing. And there's, there's a good smell in that pavilion. You know, there's Disney smells everywhere. It's just one of those good, like you have a little bit of the water from the ride smell, which oh my gosh, yes, that's gross to some people. I love it. Um, but it just it feels nostalgic in there. I don't know. It just feels old school Disney when you're eating in there. It does. And I am teaching my kids Spanish, Mm -hmm. and so it was great for them. I mean, yes the Mexico pavilion is stereotypical to a certain degree, but it was great Mm -hmm. for them to have just that little bit of exposure and to definitely hear the language for sure. Um, you know, at the restaurant and, um, just around them, Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm always telling them, you know, learning a different language exposes you to so many different new people that you can talk Mm -hmm. to and get to know. So it was nice for them to kind of see that in action at the restaurant. Um, so that was neat. And yeah. then we went on the Grand Fiesta tour, which they loved. They thought that was so fun. And I don't know. I like it too. I wouldn't mind if they made it a Coco ride, but I still think it's fine on its own. <laughs> and the three caballeros are fixed and the animatronics are back. Oh, interesting. Excellent. So yeah, we left. Not, not so cardboard anymore. <laughs> no, horrible, <laughs> horrible. Um, but we did a few more rides and then around four, Uh, Michael's uncle picked us up and brought him to his house. And then we Mm -hmm. had pizza and swimming uh, with his aunt and uncle. And it was so great. We got home around 830 and went to bed and that was day one. It was awesome. That's that's a good little day and a nice little mix of family time too. I know that was the best. Yeah. 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 All right. Where did you go next? Okay. Day two was Magic Kingdom. And Another tip is I could not get any reservations leading up to the trip. Normally, Mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned I'm able to get Cinderella's Royal Table like the week before, and it's fine Mm -hmm. with how I plan trips, which is kind of last minute. But with the new, with the way things are with park reservations, it's so hard to get any food reservation at all. Mm -hmm. Um, But I would just keep checking throughout the day and I ended up getting every reservation I wanted. So I was checking while we were at Magic Kingdom and I ended up snagging an 11, 10 reservation for Be Our Guest. Okay. That's awesome. I will say they changed their lunch. So before, instead of being quick service, it is now a prefix menu, Mm -hmm. just like dinner. So it's like $64 a person. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't read that fine print when I booked yeah. it did say prefix, but I'm like, oh, but that's not me. Yeah. Lunch is quick service. <laughs> fine. So I booked mm-hmm. it anyway. And then they told me when I got there, but they also said, you know, but we do let you cancel without a charge. If you don't want to do this, okay. like if you want to leave right now, mm-hmm. um, we have a Disney chase. And mm-hmm. uh, we have like the Disney rewards card, which has Disney dollars. So I just yeah. used that and I paid for like half the meal. And I'm like, well, whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's something to keep in mind with lunch. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to pay that much, because even kids, it's like $37 a kid. Yeah. you get a, It's delicious and you get a lot of food, but it's very expensive for lunch. So I know I'm familiar with the dinner menu there with the lunch menu, Are the kid options kitty or are they the same as the dinner options? Um, I think it's the same now. Mm -hmm. Annie got, um, I think she got like the beef tenderloin, which was steak essentially. She really Mm -hmm. likes steak. And then Jake, Jay got, um, chicken breast. Okay. Which he seemed to like the highlight though was dessert. Mm -hmm. They give you, um, like two or three dessert items and then they give you a, a chip cup, like chip mm-hmm. from Beauty and the Beast. It's white chocolate. So it's in like a chocolate chip mold. That's how they make it. And then um, they, they give adults the gray stuff in it. I don't remember what the kids, but anyway, they give kids a paintbrush and then different color frosting and they can paint mm. the chip cup. Okay. And that's my, cool. My kids love that. Yeah. But everyone gets an appetizer. Um, <clears throat> 
an entree and then the three desserts for adults come with it. They get every dessert. So is it worth it? Um, I still think that the prefix menu in France is a better deal. It's like $41 and you Mm -hmm. get, you know, appetizer, entree and dessert, but yeah, you're going, you're getting the atmosphere too, whether you're eating in the West wing in the ballroom and the beast comes out too. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're hiking the price up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, but my magic kingdom day. So we got there, um, before rope drop every day we got there before rope drop, which is definitely the way to go Mm -hmm. both the heat and, um, just like the crowds yeah. and, uh, did Peter Pan's flight right away. And we just did, that was mainly a day of rides. I think that was probably our favorite day because the kids are very into rides now. Mm-hmm. And Jay, who's the youngest, didn't quite get the whole ride concept last time. And he definitely got it this time. So he's like, well, yeah. now, what ride are we going on now? What ride now? I like had my fill in Dole Whips. I was living my best life. I had the Kakamora, which I think might be my new favorite dessert right now. Dole okay. Whip, which I shared with my kids. But Jay mm-hmm. shared my Kakamore with me. And then I got the I Lava You, which you can get um, at the oh my gosh, Sunshine Tree Terrace. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, don't, don't regret it at all. But yeah, that was, that was a really full day. Again, we left around two or three. And I think that was the most uncomfortable we got heat wise. Okay. Uh, yeah. But other than that, again, leaving by two or three, going back, napping, everyone was really tired each day. And then we yeah. did a long pool day at the main pool at old Key West. They have a great pool. Um, it's modeled after a sand castle. And so they have a water slide and they have children's life vests. So you can put that on your kid and then you don't have to worry about them drowning. And that's a huge yeah. relief because there's so yeah. many kids there and you're like, okay, which one is mine? And yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was probably, I, I like that. That was, that was really fun. And the main pool seemed to be warmer than the other pools. I just, as a side note, I know it's heated more and we ate there as well. Maybe it's more in the, that 97 degree sun. Yeah. Also mobile order, um, at the parks still seems to be way faster than just waiting in line. I did mobile order so many times and it's like instantaneous for desserts at least. Yeah. Frank was saying that too. He was, he said he became a pro at mobile ordering. It's so fast. Yeah. It was great. That's that. I think that's cool that they incorporated that and that it's working so well. Cause that's a really good option to have. Also, they've, I noticed this last month is that they've started the whole wait list, virtual mm-hmm. wait list. Mm-hmm. And I like that too. Um, they don't have it everywhere, but we, the day we got in, um, we were just hungry. So I went over to Olivia's and looked at their wait list and they tell you how long it is, which mm-hmm. in this case, it was five minutes. And then they ask okay. you, do you still want to join? And I said, yes. And then it's, you know, they just tell you when your table's ready, um, So that whole part is kind of like checking in for your, for your table anywhere, but that was really neat, but, um, they weren't always available at every Mm -hmm. park because it was too busy of a day or whatever. But I do like, I like that. Um, I like that they've incorporated that, but Hollywood studios was our last day. And I was most looking forward to that. Um, I got up early to try to get into rise, I started refreshing at like six 54 mm-hmm. and within three seconds, mm-hmm. all the boarding passes, three seconds, uh-huh. not like, not like I wasn't there. Not like I wasn't on time. I'd been refreshing for six minutes, yeah. three seconds. They were all gone. And I didn't get, I didn't get a rise boarding pass. Crazy. I did That's everything so right. I did Mm-hmm. Everything right. I turned off all my other apps. I was not using Disney Wi Fi. I had mm-hmm. everyone in my group ready to go. Three seconds they were gone. It was ridiculous. Wow. That's I was nuts. very upset. It's, yeah, it's been so crazy. That it's the only downside for me with the whole virtual queue idea is if, you know, if it's gonna be like that for a lot of rides in the future are they going to keep it where it is just like this insane to try to get Mm -hmm. on a ride? I mean, and I know there's a lot of hype with Rise of the Resistance right now. So I know probably over time that'll get better, but the amount of people that have that experience of I was there, I was trying and I couldn't get in. It's, it's nuts. So 
it just goes back to when they first started the virtual queue Mm -hmm. and how many people only had one day at Hollywood studios. Mm -hmm. And this was before, um, you know, like the afternoon queue was a bigger thing and that was their only chance to go on the ride and they didn't get to, and Mm -hmm. we could have done the one o'clock queue. Um, but we ended up doing something else. So I could have tried for that, but it's like, that could be their only chance. And it's yeah. kind of, it's, it's a lot of money to go to Disney. And if that's something yeah. you're really looking forward to and you don't get to do that, that's a huge bummer. So that's, yes. that's the only thing I really, I'm just going to go ahead and say, Hey, I really hate that yeah. about mm-hmm. the whole virtual queue and rise. And um, so we didn't get to do it, but we did because we were there so early. Cause again, we went before the park opened. Mm-hmm. We, um, we did like nine minutes for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. Mm-hmm. And um, Jay and I got the pilot, but I cannot do inverted controls. Um, uh-huh. There's a video on the Touring Plans uh, YouTube channel of me piloting the Falcon. And it was mm-hmm. a terrifying experience. <laughs> and I'm like, Michael, you, you know, you're, you're in aviation. You would better do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did film about a minute, minute of that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll post that at some point. Mm-hmm. But um Michael and Jay were pilots and Annie and I were the gunners and that was very cute. And then Slinky was down by the time, actually quite a few rides were down at Hollywood studios, which was a big bummer. Um, but the kids got to try the blue milk. I got, um, a little, uh, galaxy's edge Sprite. Um, Mm -hmm. so we brought that home as a little souvenir and, um, we did Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway, which, it's like, I'm so bittersweet about it. Like (laughs) Uh it replaced great movie ride. So I'm bitter every time I have to get in that queue, but then Mm -hmm. it's such a good ride that I'm mad that I like it so much. Yeah. But the kids, that was their favorite ride. Like they giggled, um, with the Daisy part and Michael really enjoyed it. He got off the ride and was like, you know, that was really good. Like it was a good ride for them. And that was like really well done. Mm -hmm. Great job. And I'm like, who are you? Um, (laughs) But yeah, there really wasn't a ton to do at Hollywood Studios. I did snag a last minute day of reservation at Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater, Mm -hmm. which I was either hoping for that or Oga's. And that ended up being much better because it was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, We hadn't been there probably since either Annie was a baby or even before that. So it had been forever. And that was really nice. Uh, The food was really good too. I had this chicken pasta that was kind of lemony. And we Mm -hmm. shared this like lactose free, which you didn't even know it was lactose free until you had it. It was like an Oreo shake. It was, it was delicious. Mm. Mm, It was so good. Um, and then the kids went on tower of terror, Mm -hmm. which how was that? I was like, are you sure? Are you Uh sure you want to go? Yeah. (laughs) yeah. And Jay is kind of a scaredy cat. Like if Annie's super brave, nothing Mm -hmm. can scare her. Jay is like the opposite, but he like all of a sudden got like his big boy pants on. He's like, yeah, I want to go. And so we're walking and waiting in the queue is like a 20 minute wait. And I'm like, okay, you guys, like there's a chicken door at at the Mm -hmm. end if you don't want to do it. So we're walking through the basement and, and Annie's like, well, what's the scary part? I said, well, you just, it feels like you're falling. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that it? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're like still going through the basement and you know, we're nearing the elevator part. And I said, okay, guys, this is your last chance. And Michael and I, Michael doesn't even want to go on it at all. Like he was like, there's a kid that doesn't want to go. (laughs) That's fine. We'll wait outside. You're good. Uh But they're like, no, I want you to go. Cause I even said, well, I'll go with them. You can stay. Oh daddy, I want you to go. And he's like, all right. (laughs) Um, so you get to the elevator. I'm like, okay, last chance. There's the chicken door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I want to go. And then by then, like, you know, you see like the, the elevator cables shaking and you Uh know, you know, in your head, you're like, this is all animated. It's not real, but Mm -hmm. you start to get nervous and it's scary as right at Disney for me. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we're on number four and they call six and five and four. And, um, I put the seatbelts on and I look at Michael and I'm like, I'm starting to get kind of scared, but I can't show that I'm scared. Yep. If you did realize I was scared, you would see uh, I think there's footage out there of me just like completely screaming. It's I get <laughs> terrified on this ride, but I yeah. couldn't do that because if I freaked out, my children would freak out and then everyone would be crying and it'd be horrible. But um, 
uh, we went on the ride and then right before the drop, I said, okay, guys, this is, this is the scary part. This is where it falls now. So I gave them that warning. And then I grab onto Jay for dear life. Cause his little butt is the size of like two rolls and he weighs <laughs> like five pounds. And I'm like, he's going to go flying if this mm-hmm. seatbelt is not tight enough. So yeah. I grab onto him and I don't know what it is, but every time I go on this ride, it does the long version of the drops and it does mm-hmm. the fake out where you think that you're done and you see the people and everything. And then it drops you again yeah. every time. That's the one I get. So, um, we did that and they <laughs> did not scream. They did not say a word. It was just like, like looks of terror, <laughs> like almost paralyzing fear, but they were fine. No one cried. Everyone yeah. was good. They're just like, like that was scary. And I'm like, <laughs> yep, it was. <laughs> That's and awesome. Good. good for them. I know. Yeah. I'm still shocked about it. But that was our that was our last ride, and I yeah uh, we took the Skyliner just to um Caribbean Beach because I like the Skyliner, mm-hmm. and then we went back and did more swimming and packed up, and then flew out really early on Saturday because Michael had to work from mm. four to midnight. So I felt really bad. Oh wow! At like four thirty. Yeah. Um, and then fly back. So it was shorter compared to other trips we've mm-hmm. been on, but, um, it was still very exhausting in a good way. And we made yeah. a lot of fun memories. So we got a lot of swimming in too. So that's always good where it Ton feels like swimming. Better. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's good. So that's awesome. And it sounds like you had a good time. We did. I am. Yeah. It was, it was just enough time where like, it's the day before you leave and you feel like, okay, I'm ready to go home now. Yeah. This was fun. We've divided and conquered as far as the kids and everything, mm-hmm. but it's time to go back to real life. Yeah. No, good. that's good though. And then we'll next, got a little bit of magic. We did. We got some magic yeah. and, and they were really, really, oh, that was a pen. They were really, really good. Like, um, they waited nice in queues. They never mm-hmm. complained about wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we said, okay, well, do you guys want to pick out a souvenir? You've been so good. You've been waiting mm-hmm. so well this whole time. And Jay picked out this teeny tiny baby Grogu in this little mm-hmm. pram that was like the size of his hand. And then Annie picked out a keychain. And mm-hmm. they could have, they could have picked out, you know, <laughs> anything within yeah. reason. And, and it was just something so modest. So they're so sweet. So Jennifer, yes, your next Disney trip. I might have one coming up soon. Maybe we'll have to talk about it soon. Okay. Maybe we'll have to, maybe we'll have to discuss. Maybe an episode will be perhaps an announcement and a discussion about Is this like a teaser? Trip. It might be. I think this is a teaser. I think we could teaser. tease this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something we'll have to come back to. Yeah. Yes. We are, well, I'm bringing Jay next month. We're doing a day at Hollywood Studios, which now mm-hmm. I kind of wish I had chosen Magic Kingdom just because so many things were down at Hollywood Studios. Mm-hmm. I think it should still be fine though. And yeah. then a day at Universal. That'll but I don't fun. know what we should do the day of. I got to think about that. Yeah. We'll brainstorm next episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys found this episode interesting. If you have any questions, let us know on Twitter. You can find Mm us. Well, I don't know. Definitely in the links below. (laughs) I'll just, I'll let that talk speak for itself. Speak for itself. Why can't I talk? Yeah. Speak by itself. Sure. All right. Well, I hope you're having a great day, night, whatever you are doing. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.